Hey everybody, uh, Matt Donner from Pyramind here, back with another breakdown. Uh, do like to start with a big fat thank you to the internet because everyone's been so cool with comments and reaching out to me. I've gotten emails from people all over the world sending me really awesome music. Thank you. By all means, please keep that up. Um, the inbox is getting a little full, but uh, if I'm a little slow getting back to you, I apologize. I'm going to do everything I can to get to get back to you. Uh, I do get back to everybody. Uh, it might take a week or so. I'm just kind of got my hands full at the moment, but don't let that stop you. By all means, send in stuff. Um, today, we're going to look at a track called You and I from the band Galantis. I don't know if it's Galantis or Galantis, but if you're an American, it's Galantis. If you're someone else, it's Galantis. I'm not sure, but that's not the point. The song is You and I by Galantis. And it does two things in there that I think are really cool. The main hook is four chords. Um, there's one level of complexity in that they come from this mode called Lydian. It happens to be my personal favorite. I'm a fan. Um, Lydian is this major mood, real happy, but it's kind of happy on top of happy. So it's more than just your average basic happy. It's kind of like, woo, kind of happy. So we're going to look at Lydian real quick. But in the middle of this Lydian, they use this one chord that's kind of out of nowhere. Uh, it's called a dominant chord, and it calls up feelings of classical music. Uh, if I pull up strings for a moment, I will demonstrate in the key of C, which is not our key. I'm just going to do C for demonstration purposes. Um, if we listened to... That's the old Danny Elfman Batman theme, or if I do it down here... <laughs> that chord is a dominant seven chord. It's a particular type of seventh chord that has a major triad in the first three notes, and in the second three notes, it has a diminished triad. Well, interestingly enough, this sort of dark, gothic, classic chord is in the middle of our otherwise woohoo, happy Galantis track. And I'll point it out to you. I've got a little loop. I've um, I sampled a small bit of it and looped it and warped it and put it into the tempo I wanted. It's actually at 126. I put it at 124 for reasons I will show you later. Um, we happen to be in the key of... G flat major, or in fact, G flat Lydian. Our four main notes are G flat, B flat, A flat, F. Now the F is where the dominant thing comes in. For the other three chords, one, two, three, or one, three, two, these guys are a one major, three minor, two major, and that's where things get Lydian. Because in a major scale, a two chord is minor. It would be this guy. But that, that doesn't sound like our song. It sounds sadder. Which is why, even though it's a major, major is happy, our Lydian, happier. So we have a one chord, a two chord, a whole step away, that's also major, a three chord, that's also a whole step away, in minor. So we've got a one major, three minor, two major. That is Lydian. Okay. In fact, all you need are the one and the two to make Lydian, but those are the chords. Uh, and then the fourth chord is this dominant chord. Let's take a listen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger the clip and I'm just going to play one, three, two, three. This third note, the third this guy, B flat, it's correct the first time, it's incorrect the second time. I'll fix it afterwards, but for now I'm just going to do it so you can hear along with, and then I'll play the chords, then we'll show why this other note is something different. Those are the basic triad versions of this song, um, but that's not actually what's happening. In the fourth chord through, it does something a little bit different. This is where they go into this chord called dominant. Now, a dominant chord is built on the fifth scale degree of a major. So when somebody says dominant, you should hear five chord. 
Uh, we don't always use it as the five chord, but it behaves like a five chord. And the reason I say that is because it's been an old tenet of music theory that the five chord wants to go to the one chord. They have this really strong magnetic relationship. It's called the, the authentic cadence. And the five, you want to, after the five, you want to hear the one. Now what happens is the five is dominant, but we can sometimes take the two and make it dominant. And then it feels like a five in the wrong key, and then it wants to go to somewhere else. But then you can say, ha ha, not going there, going somewhere else. So we can use this dominant chord to kind of trick your listener uh, without them even knowing it into thinking that a song is going a place where it isn't. And this is a piece of that complexity that the Galantis You and I song does. Remember, it's Lydian. And then at the end of the Lydian expression, they use this dominant chord. In our case, the dominant chord shows up a little bit differently. The one, three, two major. And from the two major, all you have to do is take the root or the thumb and move it up a half step. And then you get this chord. Now this is a diminished triad. You have a minor third and a minor third, and it gives you this like, kind of uh, like the Dirk Dastardly, whoa, ha, 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 like the tie the girl to the railroad tracks chord from the old silent movies is the joke I always use. So we have, we end on this uh, A flat major, but then we get into an A natural diminished. Now, when you hear a diminished triad, you can instantly make it or assume it's dominant. The dominance is F. There's the diminished, the diminished triad is A, C, E flat. If you make it F, A, C, E flat, you end up with an F dominant seventh chord. Now F, if it's the real five, it wants to go down a fifth here to the B flat one. That's not what we're gonna do. And so what Galantis does is they trick you into thinking that from this F, instead of going to B flat, they go right back to this G flat major or our Lydian one. And so that gives you two moments of unexpected chromaticism. Chromaticism means one note going to the note directly next to it, not in the key. So we have it here. One, three, two, chromatic, implied chromatic, chromatic again. So that's that motion, that sort of like moving to the note next to it, accidentally or unintentionally or intentionally but unexpectedly and then moving back creates this moment of sort of unexpected tension bringing it right back to the loop. Let me point out again where it happens. It's in the fourth chord of the expression. So that's it. And that one moment, it plays that chord. So it's here. the loop. So that's the complexity twice. Lydian, dominant. All of that is enough to keep this going pretty intensely for a good long while. Now, the reason why I'm showing you all of these uh, modal moves, moves to me they're like little kung fu moves, um, is because when you recognize the move in one song, you can recognize it in another song. And if you can recognize it in another song, that can really help your DJ sets. Uh, you can start getting into mashup territory, and you can do really interesting things between songs that maybe other DJs won't know to do or make you a little bit unique. So I looked at the Galanta song and I said, well, okay, it's Lydian. I got a one, three, two. What else does a one, three, two? I found a track. I've got it listed as the mystery mashup song. I want to see how long it takes you on first listen. How long does it take you to figure out what the other song is? So step number one, obviously sample the track. Step number two, warp it so that you can uh, get it in tempo. This is normally at 126. I brought it down to 124 for this purpose. I'm going to take it and I'm going to lower it down by three semitones. take the other clip and also lower it down. So now I have the same move. What was here is now here in E flat. 
G flat, F, E, E flat. I moved it down three semitones from G flat to E, and now I have it here, which allows me to do some pretty interesting mashup work. And if I wanted to, So <laughs> let me know if you figured out what song that is. It's the same exact move. It's the exact same chord progression. One's in one key, E flat. One's in the other key, G flat. Same move. All of a sudden, simple warping, simple pitch correction. I've got the same thing. I can easily play back and forth between these songs. Now, this is a whole different way of looking at your DJ sets. And if you can do this kind of modal deconstruction of your songs, you can take things a little bit further, perhaps, than the next guy. Um, Send me some stuff, let me know what you think. Uh, use it. If you're not sure how to use this stuff, by all means, reach out. Um, always happy to receive emails. Like I said, my email inbox is getting a little full, but keep them sending. Uh, I have been responding to people, uh, albeit a bit slowly, apologies. Um, until next time, I guess, this is Matt at Pure Mind, and uh, I'll see you in the breakdown next time. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pure Mind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more visit us at puremind.com.